I'm going to give you an example today that might make you think differently about how much you need to save to retire early. Now, the truth is most people that are working with us, they don't hate their job. They're just like, hey, I want to do it because I want to do it, not because I have to do it. And it's the fact that they realize, whoa, I don't have to do it because I'm in a good spot. That makes them go, well, yep, I'm going to actually keep doing it, but I'm going to change things. I'm not going to work as hard. Or I'm going to take a job that's less stressful with less responsibility. Or no, I am going to switch jobs to a career that's way less stressful that I've always wanted to do. And I'm going to do it because I want to do it and I'm in a good spot. First, there are, of course, some that are like, hey, I really hate what I'm doing. I want out yesterday. I don't know if I want another job. I want to know if I could stop working today, would I? But what I imagine you're thinking right now is if you're listening to this episode, which is I made it specifically if you're in your 40s, 50s, going, hey, I want to make sure I'm doing the right things. I want to retire early. I just don't know exactly when. Am I saving the right amount? That's what who I have in mind. And if you're listening on the younger side of that, going, hey, I just want to get ahead, like, kudos to you. But for most of you, you're like, hey, I've got 500. I've got a million bucks. I think I'm on the right track. I just not there yet. So I need some help. So I mentioned this last week and I'm going to go through this today. But last week I mentioned I've got my early retirement academy coming out. That is coming out June 1st. That is going to have the software that allows you to run these projections on your own so that you can go, okay, am I on track? What things should I be thinking about that I otherwise couldn't have otherwise known? So Hopefully, that's going to be exactly what you're looking for. Once again, that comes out June 1st. You want the discount code. You just go to the survey in the description of today's episode, and you will be able to fill that out. So I want to tell you an example right off the bat, my quick story, because this is a real-life story. It's how I like to do these. And then I'm going to give you my entertaining review of the week, um, a fun review, and we're going to have some fun. So as much as possible, I do try to keep these fun. Some of you are like, hey, I listen while I'm working out or while I'm you know, driving. I'm like, cool. I recognize you don't want it to be like, I got to learn another lesson today. Now, I like learning. I think you like learning. That's why you're here. But I also want to make sure you don't get fluff content. And you're like, what do you mean? Well, oftentimes, if you were to ask any advisor, um, and if they're a good one, they will respond in the following way. If you go, hey, how much should I save to retire early? They're going to go, it depends. I'm like, hey, that's great. It does depend, but I need more than that. I want some more guidance. And so what I'm going to go through today is maybe another way to think about this. So you go, hey, that's helpful. Um, a lot of you know my dumb joke, but... When I went to a physician a few months ago, I said, hey, doc, um, I think what you just said sounds great. I think you think that it sounded great. I don't know what you just said. So like, try again, please. Like, I need to make sure this is coming through. And I'm not trying to be mean. I just need to understand why you're saying what you're saying. So I'm going to go through an example real quick um, and see if this resonates with you guys. You might start thinking a little differently. So someone said, uh, this was a, a while ago now, they said, hey, uh, and, you know, I'm the first person, anyone reached out to the company, I want to speak with you to see if you're a good fit, etc. So um, they said, hey, tell me what you do in 15 seconds. And if I don't like your answer, you're like fired before I even start. I'm like, okay, give me at least a minute to think about this answer, considering I'm going to be fired in, you know, 60 seconds if you don't like me. I go, okay. Uh, they said, okay. So I said, hey, my job is to quantify trade-offs so you understand the magnitude of those decisions. And they're like, okay, we can continue. But like, they still aren't that happy. And I'm like, okay. So anyway, the point of the story here, I'm going to give you my example. So a client came to me and they were 50. They were really stressed out. Okay, 50 years old, really stressed out, a few different accounts, but a million dollars was the general total. It's like 988, but a million dollars for simplicity's sake. Now, they're really stressed out. What I really care about is how much do you want to spend in retirement? That's the big driver that most people overlook, but it's not sexy because it's not investing and tax planning, And but that's the big one. Okay, so don't overlook that. But let's, for the sake of argument, say you're 50, you've got a million bucks. You can do the same analysis I'm doing right now. If you're 40 with 500,000 or 40 with a million or 30 with a million, same thing. It's going to just apply it to your situation. So here's how I want you to think about it. There's a time value of money calculator. And so it's very common people go, yeah, I, I'm working right now. I'm really stressed, but I, I know I should be adding more money because it's going to help. And they're correct. It does help. But then there becomes a point where saving more doesn't help nearly as much as investing the right way. And you're like, what do you mean? Well, if you have a million dollars and you get a 10% rate of return, that's significant. That's $100,000 growth you just received. If you have $10,000 and you get a 10% rate of return, good for you, but that's a thousand bucks. So I'll often tell children of clients, and I'll joke because a child of a client did come to me and they were like, hey, I want you to help me like put crypto in my 401k. I'm like, not only are we not doing that, um, but what's going to happen is I need you to shut up. And they're like, oh, how dare you talk to me? And the parent was loving it. Like I asked permission. They want to, you know, we're very transparent with this family. And they're like, the, the child's like, oh my God, what do you mean? Shut up. I've never been spoken to that way. I'm like, hey, I'm just kind of joking around here. But my premise is I don't want you to worry about your return. What you need to do at 20 years old is go max out your 401k. That's way more important than any return. It's the opposite when you get a lot older. 
if you were to not add twenty thousand dollars because you're fifty and you have a million dollars already, you're not going to see me freak out because I'm going to say I need you invested the right way because a adding $20,000 does not come close to getting the right return. So some of you are like, yep, that makes sense. Just need to hear it. So hopefully that helps. Now on my example, you're 50 years old, you've got a million bucks and let's assume you want to retire. Let's just say in 10 years at 60, keep it simple. Okay. Let's assume you want to retire in 10 years. Okay. So here you are, you want to retire in 10 years. This example I'm going to tell you right now is only going to resonate if you understand the rule of 72. Most of you have heard of it. Some of you are like, no, it's really cool. Okay, so the premise here is there's a really complex formula. Don't worry about it. What it means is the rule of 72 tells you how long it takes to double your money based on the return that you receive. So let's assume you take 72 and you divide that by 10%. Okay, so 10% is the return you get. That's going to tell you it's going to take you 7.2 years to double your money. Okay. So some of you are like, Hey, that's great. But like, I don't want to rely on like 10%. I go, great. Let's for simplicity's sake, rely on 7.2%. 72 divide that by the 7.2. Here we are 10 years to double your money. So let's assume you're 50 and you have a million dollars. And if you get 7.2% every year, which you won't just taking an average after 10 years, your money's going to double to 60. I know a lot of you are like, Hey, well, where are you choosing 7.2% from? And what's the, I just made it up. Okay. So I'm just choosing it. You could do a lot better than that. You could do worse than that. Just let's use 7.2% for simplicity. So here you are at 50 with a million bucks, your money doubles, and now you're 60 with 2 million bucks. Okay. So the same person is a real person. I'm taking the example from, they are 50. They're making $120,000 every year. Now they're really stressed and they don't love what they do. So they go, Ari, I'm thinking about quitting and taking a job that pays way less that I enjoy more. And I've already kind of picked it out. And I go, okay, you're one step ahead because most people haven't already picked it out. They just start thinking about this. I go, how much are you saving every year? They go, Ari, I'm saving $10,000 a year. I go, okay, great. Where's that going? They go, it goes to my 401k. I, I've already got a brokerage account because I started that early and, you know, which I call the superhero, if you guys don't know, because it is the real superhero for an early retirement. Because if you want to retire before 59 and a half, you got to tap into accounts earlier. Where are you going to go for that? That kind of thing. So 120,000 a year, that's what they're making and they're stressed. So picture this guy, he's 50, he's got three kids and he's stressed at work. Okay. He's kind of got a visual. Now, He's working right now. He's saving 10,000 bucks a year. So that's great. I said, Hey, if you keep doing that, you're going to be in a good spot. Like if you just, and they're like, Hey, I, I know that I'm coming to you to know, do I need to do that? I go, let's talk about your expenses and health and how much you want to leave to each kid. And so we had that whole conversation and he's like, okay, so can you just give me like the financial answer? I'm like, of course, my job is to give you the financial answer to quantify the trade-offs, understand the magnitude of the decision. So here they are, they come in to me and we, we, I do the whole thing. I show them my time value of money calculator, you know, show that, I, you know, I got some cool tools, you know, every advisor's like, let me show off my tools. I'm like, you're an advisor. Okay. It's not that cool. Unless you're doing your job really well, in which case it is cool. But most are like, look at my software. I'm like, software is helpful for a conversation, but that's all it is. Most people rely only on the software. Don't do that. Um, same story here. I won't do a big tangent, but someone came to me like, hey, I have a 99% chance of success. I go, then go retire. They're like, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm like, why not? It says 99%. You ran these little Monte Carlo simulations. It's pretty cool. Go retire. And they're like, yeah, I don't know about that. I go, why not? They go, well, I, I just, it says 99, but like, I don't know what that's based on. So I said, okay, what's the inflation assumption in the plan? And they're like, I don't know. I go, well, does it assume that brackets are going to change? They go, no. What's the, your plan for healthcare when you retire early? They go, I don't know. I go, so it says 99%, but you don't have actually any confidence in that. It's just 99 for the sake of it. They go, yeah, that's kind of right. I go, okay, great. So let's make sure you understand the plan. So if it says 99%, you know, there's real 99% versus most people kind of have a plan. They think it's okay, but they don't know. So I won't do my big tangent here. I promise back to the story. Keep it really simple. 50 years old, make 120,000 a year, got a million bucks. Simple enough. When that, if he adds $10,000 every single year, which once again, that's what he's saving to his 401k right now, he will have $2.14 million because once again, he, it won't just be two, 10, it won't be 1 million becomes 2 million because he's adding new dollars. So because he's adding $10,000 year over year, it's going to grow a little bit, helps compound the portfolio, beautiful stuff. Here he is $2.14 million. Okay. So you're going, why did you just tell me the story? Well, because I'm going to show you the alternative that I told him to think about, the one that he actually took, and I'm going to show you why. So now you've got the picture of a 50-year-old guy making 120000 a year with three kids, and he's stressed, okay? Now, for the sake of argument, I'm not including his wife's details, how much they want to spend, and yada, yada. Let's go to my alternative, okay? And I know I'm still in story mode. I haven't even hit the comments of the week yet. So maybe I'll make this a four-hour episode for you guys. I'm just kidding. Um, so 
Let's now assume instead of 120,000 a year, I tell him to go take this other job that pays way less that he's going to enjoy way more. Okay. And you're going, I know you're thinking right now, you're going, yeah, but like, he's not going to make as much. So is it worth it? And I go, you're thinking about it wrong. And you're like, what do you mean? Here's how to think about it. Okay. I'm going to give you the, the alternative, but you got to understand it. If I came to him and said, Hey, I don't want you to take this job that you're stressed out right now. And it's, you know, you're, Yes, you're making 120,000 a year. Yes, you're saving 10,000. But I actually would rather you take this job that pays 10,000 a year. A lot of you are going, well, then I can't meet my bills. Then I can't do X, Y, Z. Oh, and, and I'm the first person to go, yep, I know. I understand how that works. But here's what I need you to think about. If you're making 10,000, your first thought is, wow, 10,000 is not that big of a deal. It's not going to allow me to do what I want to do. I go, you're right. 10,000 is not a big deal. But what I want you to think about is what if it was 60,000? You're like, I told you I make 120, so 60 is not that big of a deal. I go, you might not think so, but it's not 60 that I care about. I know if you made 60,000 a year, you probably wouldn't be able to save even that 10,000. I would argue maybe it even makes cash tight. And you're like, yes, you're scaring me now. I go, yeah, I know it would make you tight, but here's what you didn't think about. It's not 60,000 a year that I care about. It's 60,000 less that has to come from your portfolio. And I would rather you do that then you simply continue doing the job that's super stressful. And it's because your portfolio is at a healthy position. I don't need you to save as much anymore. I need you to invest well. I need you to prioritize your health. I need you to spend knowing you're in a good spot to do so. And I don't want you to die with $10 million at age 85 or 95 or 100. They're like, okay, you've got me intrigued. You don't have convinced, but okay, go on. So here's the alternative. Most people go, what big of a deal is it? I make 120, 200, 500, a million bucks a year right now. If I make 100,000, is that even going to matter? I go, not only does it matter, it only matters because you have a healthy portfolio. So you don't need to save as much. Saving doesn't have as much impact. So here's the alternative. I told the, this client, go make, go take this job that pays $60,000 a year. That's a 50% haircut to what you're paying today. Your kids are already through college and you've saved well for them. You don't need to keep saving. Take this job. It pays 50% less. Don't save anything. And let's assume we use that same rule of 72. After 7.2, you know, once again, just assuming 7.2 is your rate of return. After 10 years, your million dollars would have doubled. And so now here you are 60 with $2 million. So what's the difference here? Well, in example one, he's going to keep working 10 more years at a stressful job that he doesn't enjoy. And it's because he thinks it's going to save and make a big difference. And at the end, he has $2.14 million versus making $60,000 a year, half, way less stressed, enjoying what he wants to do. And he has $2 million at the end. So it's a $140,000 difference. Now, of course, growth, different changes. Yeah, let's assume there's more growth. Let's assume he starts more than 10,000 a year. Yeah, maybe he'd have 2.3 or 2.4 instead of 2 million. But I would argue, how much is enough? Now, this particular client also has a spouse. And so it's not like this is their only income. In addition to that, their kids are going through college. They're going to be fine. And so his next question after this was, how early can I retire? And so now he's going, ooh, this was based on 10 years. I said, yeah, let's assume what if, let's take the same example, but let's assume you get 10% rate of return. They go, ooh, yeah, let's do that. I go, why are you so excited now? They go, well, now I understand this rule of 72. If I get a 10% rate of return, my money is going to double in 7.2 years, hypothetically. And so now I'm not working until 60, I'm working until 57. I just cut three years off my retirement because I invested well. I go, that's right. And they're like, oh, this is why planning's cool. So the point here is if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, thinking about how to think through this, prioritize your energy and your health. Make sure, yeah, you're spending a lot. The common mistake people will also make is they'll go, hey, yeah, I know I could take a job that pays less, but like I've got bills today. I need to, can I put my kids through college? Yeah, my long-term retirement looks good, but my short-term retirement doesn't look good, which is like the next five to 10 years. And I don't, if I'm gonna retire at like 57, all right, I don't have a 401k, so how am I gonna bridge that gap? And that's when I say, I am the meanest early retirement advisor. I don't want you to ever retire too early and run the risk of running out. I just wanna make sure you're not working unnecessarily. So hopefully that 15, 10 minute story just resonated with you where part-time income plays a big role. I won't even call it part-time income. I'll call it a job that's way less stressful. I don't love the word retirement. I prefer recreational employment. Are you working because you want to or because you have to? 
That's what I, and then from there you might go, yeah, I'm going to on purpose, keep working 10 more years because I want to spend and go first class for the rest of my life. When I take trips, I go, cool. Let me show you how much you need to do that. I may say you can do it right now. That's what a planner should be doing for you. So with that being said, let's go through the quick reviews of the week. And uh, this comes from Chuk Chuk 2451. He says, I'm not an American, but this advice is relatable. I'm currently doing all the fix-up jobs on my house now. Hope to retire in two years. Love your enthusiasm and genuine love of your work. Keep it up. So what he's referring to is very, very common. There's something, something called sequence of return risk. Don't let it freak you out because you're like, oh my God, I've never heard of that before. Okay, here's what it means. What if you retire and you get unlucky? You retire at 57 and you go, oh my God, markets go down and it's the same year I'm going to take those trips and I've got health care because Medicare is not in and oh my gosh, I, I you know, was going to hope to do a remodel. What you don't want to do is get unlucky, markets go down, you retire and now you have all these expenses and the risk is it could really take a big hit to what you're going to spend the rest of your life because if you have $2 million and you've got to spend on health care and travel and you've got to fix the home, well now markets are also not doing well. Well, what if you have to take two, three hundred thousand out during the year markets down? Well, now that's going to change what you're going to spend the rest of your life. So the way you protect against that is the years leading up to retirement, as much as you can, you bolster the brokerage account and you start tackling those big potential expenses, like a wedding for a child, like a home remodel, whatever it is. So that's what this person's referencing and glad that it has helped. Um, and then this is my, it's not really a hate comment this week. Every week I'll try to keep it interesting. This comes from Raise rot, R A Y Z E R O T. Um, it could be raise zero T, raise a rot, whatever it is. Um, and he says, spending that much on a wedding, a wedding, they want to spend the down payment for a house for a wedding. Holy, not going to say the next word. So the point here is what this person fails to recognize, and I don't blame them. They're not, you know, a client of mine. I haven't educated them. They probably haven't heard maybe all the podcasts, but the point here is in this particular episode, I talked about my client that spent $300,000 in a wedding and I told them to do it. And you're like, how could you recommend that? Ari? that's crazy. You know, they could have done a down payment or they could have done, I I'm well aware. Now they're an Indian couple that have specific values and this is what they care most about. And I told them to do it without any head trash. What I don't want you to do is be sitting at your kid's wedding going, I just gave him 40,000 bucks. What does that mean though for my long-term care? Did I just put away my future retirement? Am I not going to be okay? I don't want you to be sitting at your kid's wedding worrying if you give him too much. I also don't want you going, I know my child is going to be a higher earner. They're doing really well. Um, I really love them. I want to give them 100,000 bucks for their dream wedding that they've told me about but I'm not going to because, you know, I just don't know if I, my retirement can support that. And then here you are now at 85 with way too much money, wishing that you would have helped them out more. So understanding how much can you help them out? That's my job. I'm quantifying the trade-offs so they're not sitting there wondering, am I in a good spot or not? The best example I give, in my opinion, but you guys all get to tell me, is, so I'm a soccer player. I love playing soccer to an unhealthy degree. And so my point here is I am not fun to be around when I get hurt. Um, I want an MRI. An MRI is like your financial plan. Okay, am I kind of in a good spot? It's just telling, it's not going in and, you know, an MRI can be read very, you know, many different ways. And if you go to one doctor, they're going to say, hey, it's not that bad. Another person's going to say it's really bad. It's not going to take a, a expert doctor to say that your leg's broken, but, you know, a certain doctor is going to catch a little bit of inflammation versus another doctor that's going to say, hey, this doesn't require a surgery. And so having the right physician look at the MRI is important here. And so that's when I'm the first person to say, everyone doesn't need an advisor. It depends. I've got this academy that's coming out shortly. Once again, June 1st, that's going to be for those that go, Hey, I want to run these projections. I like doing this. I want to see, am I in a good spot, but I want some guidance. And maybe there's some things you're going to tell me I couldn't have otherwise known because this is what you're doing all day. That's perfect for those people. Others are like, Hey, I want an advisor. I don't want to do this. I want guidance. Great. That's why we exist. But we don't work with everyone. And the reason I tell you that, my job is to half, I joke, scare people away because what we do isn't for everyone. Some people are like, hey, just tell me what stock to buy. I don't want like tax help and like healthcare stuff or withdrawal stuff. Just tell me. I'm like, great. There are 10 firms down the street. I said this last week that will help you out. It's just not us, not because we're mean, but because you're going to be looking for something that we don't do. We're not stock pickers. We're out here saying, hey, you worked really hard to accumulate what you have. It's now time to optimize it. This next stage of life is a different story. Um, it's got different challenges. I don't want you to still be a great saver. If you stay as a good saver, which is why you probably are where you are today, 
you will not have success. Yeah, your plan's going to look fine, but you're going to wish you spent more along the way and you don't know how much you can spend. So this is what I'm all about. This is what I want you to go through. I want you guys to get the guidance you're looking for. Hopefully this was helpful. If so, please, of course, rate the show, review the show, helps more people find it and share it with someone you want to retire early with. That's all I got for you guys today. Love you guys.